This is the second half of my revelations on Greg Hallett's stories about profiteering in wartime, about double agents, about the ruthless political leadership which was absolutely chaotic and involved the training of people to work for both the Axis powers and the Allied powers at the same time. Uh, a lot of the characters in it are people that were given names that became cartoon characters and everybody is aware of them in everybody's home and the children cuddle them the story behind it is really really sinister and it is the launch of big time intel and the law and the current project which we now have which is threatening uh, the world with you know extinction for greed and to cover the massive crimes of the uh, money launderers and the economic and financial services sector thieves all of the treasuries globally are emptied and uh, we are in a horrible sovereign debt crisis and it is ever so volatile as it was intended throughout world history and Greg Hallett is telling that story to us in a series of chunks. We've gotten to Dieppe on the French coast, sorry we've gotten to Dunkirk and Operation Dynamo. Early on in the war it was evident that Goring and Hitler were both British agents although they may not have known each other where that each other were. Donitz, Raider, Milch, Canaris and Oster were also British agents, as was Rosenbard, who was codenamed the Griffin, uh, a famous Freemasonic icon uh, for the city of London and the name of one of the professors that I worked with in New Zealand, that has made £66 million on behalf of New Zealand agriculture. Everything in New Zealand is still owned by the Brits and he was Irish uh, and everything that they do in these sectors leads to the sectarian violence and wars that never end. Most of them were accessed after World War I when they were POWs in British hands. Canaris had many heart-to-hearts with British interrogating officers as did Donitz who was under psychiatric care in Manchester October 1918 to July 1919. Rosenbad was an Austrian army officer captured by the British and he was turned around by a lowly British regimental I.O. in Italy at the end of World War I. Rosenbad went on to report to British control officers right through the 20s, 30s and 40s and was ultimately taken over by the Americans. At the end of World War II, Rosenbad was awarded the American Medal of Freedom while his ex-wife became the chief of the Stasi whoever said spying wasn't in the family. A huge number of other German officers would rewrite reports, fudge documents and not work in Germany's interests. Defeatism was rampant right through the entire German armed forces and played a part in nearly all battlefield losses, including Dunkirk. The loss of four battleships, German battleships, is a case in point. Every loss was accompanied by a massive breach of standing orders and procedures. In virtually none of these cases was the offending officer prosecuted and someone else always became the scapegoat. This was controlled warfare on an enormous scale that breached both sides to the point of musical chairs. British Captain Little Hart, retired or RET, was renowned as a newspaper columnist and military strategist for the press. He had written several books on armoured tactics uh, which the German general Guderian praised as giving him all his ideas. Little Hart ran around with a suitcase containing groceries and pad paper and was well known by German officers in every allied holding camp as a virtual shop steward for German generals. He was on very friendly terms with most of them. Uh, and Greg's revealed how the the Napoleonic Revolution killed 600,000 innocents in fudged campaigns that are botched 
intentionally like this okay so we're getting down nearer the bottom Anthony Blunt it's a household name because of James Blunt uh, and Anthony Blunt's mother was Hilda Master she was the daughter of a magistrate in the Indian colonial service she married beneath herself to a poor Anglican priest named Stanley Blunt who achieved his role through zealous preaching and his ability to blind and deceive others a talent much valued by spying, double-handed, sly rooting monarchies. Three and a half years before his coronation, the future King George V had an ongoing sex for dress exchange programme with Hilda Master. The sponsor was his wife, Mary of Teck, daughter of Fat Mary and future Queen of England. Uh, M. 6 July, is that married? 6 July 1893 footnote 1 Maria Tech would have dresses made for A-list occasions she couldn't be seen wearing them twice so she gave them away King George V would do the giving away in exchange for sex one of the recipients of the future Queen Consort Mary's dresses and King George V's armours was Hilda Masters and after many A-list occasions and many dresses they conceived a child together he was 41 at the time and his wife didn't particularly mind. Sex for them was a matter of facing ugliness and dim-wittedness only since found in the realm of Boy Scout Masters. Sorry, sorry to the Boy Scout Masters that I know. Uh, during one of these sex for dress exchange programmes, the Prince of Wales from 9th November 1901, the Vice Admiral of the Royal Navy from 1903, the sailor prince and future King George V showed Hilda Master his large blue and red dragon tattooed on his right arm. They then conceived an illegitimate son a fortnight before the Christmas of 1906. The illegitimate child name was Anthony Blunt, 26 September 1907 to 26 March 1983, and he was to become a royal spy. Anthony was gay, as is so common with those who grew up without their biological father. His house father was penniless, a religious replacement in denial, and none too bright. It was in virtually impossible for them to bond. Footnote 1. Mary of Tech, Victoria, Ma Mary, Augusta, Louise, Olga, Pauline, Claudine, Agnes, was previously engaged to her husband's brother, the Duke of Clarence, but he died six weeks after the engagement from a mysterious illness, pneumonia. Same for Prince Albert. Right then, almost there. Wallace Simpson and King Edward VIII. That's the abdicated king. Sex and the German spies in the British monarchy. The Oxford Dictionary which takes final editorial input from the monarchy, describes Wallace Simpson, 1896-1986, as the American wife of King, George, King Edward VIII, 26 June 1894 to 28 May 1972, who reigned for 11 months in 1936 after King George V. Her relationship with the king caused a national scandal and her second divorce forced the king's abdication they moved to France, he died and she remained a recluse until her death. In late 2003, the author was interviewing the spymaster who said, I spoke with British intelligence officer who told me this story. Wallace was the subject of a round robin in 1930. A round robin is where all intelligence are circulated with a request. They were asked if they could provide a woman that might revive the future king's jaded sexual appetite this was Edward VIII, later famous for his 11-month reign, gay fashions, the Windsor Knot and abdication. King George V had visited the front lines at the beginning of World War I and his horse rolled on top of him, breaking his pelvis. Thereafter he suffered ill health, mainly bronchitis and was in continual pain. His eldest son John was retarded, ignored by his mother and left to randomly garden on one of the estates. David was a little less retarded, but not much. He has to, was to become Edward VIII. As king, it was essential to do all, to all who had designs on England that David became their pawn. 
this was easily done as said this was as easily done as said somebody remembered having sex with an american naval officer's wife in a chinese brothel in the forbidden city in peking china she was learning the secrets of chinese amour while working for free and it was this free aspect that drew british intelligence attention they knew they were dealing with a lifetime actress who survived on attention rather than food. The agent replied back to London and London said, that's just what we need, we'll be coming straight out to get her. The woman was Wallace Simpson, the future partner of the King. Uh, now I believe that may be also part of the It Happened in Monterey joke, which I think is where on the west coast of America in the Mexican region that Wallace Simpson resided and she had two husbands on that continent. Her dealings with the Italians in our trips around Europe are quite sinister uh, and she had affairs with many uh, and that cost her her sexual fecundity and she was no longer capable of bearing babies she was a hopeless uh, hermaphrodite right in the middle of the male female spectrum uh, and let's go on to the next one operation james bond so we're getting near the hub of the celebrities that are involved in wartime first the 10th May 1945. From the very beginning of the war, the British ran German army intelligence and had insight into what the general staff were doing. This made the war a very planned war which Britain continually expanded and prolonged. Essentially Britain trained Hitler and Stalin, gave Hitler Germany and Stalin Russia and then ordered fascist Germany to attack communist Russia, watching as they destroyed each other. In the last days of World War II, America halted outside Berlin, allowing Russia to destroy the Germans and many voluntary Scandinavian fascist units. At the same time, Britain pulled out its double agents from the inside. America and Britain had this inside-outside thing going on the whole time. The British and American High Command were making decisions that troops on the ground could not understand. America could have taken Berlin two weeks earlier, but the British had not yet extracted their agents Martin Bormann and Adolf Hitler. All the characters from Operation James Bond took their names from Winnie the Pooh. Winston Churchill had been known as Winnie since World War I. Ian Fleming was Pooh, Adolf Hitler was Rabbit and Eva Braun was Mrs. Rabbit. Admiral Canaris, a British agent in the German High Command, was Ior the Donkey. Hitler had Admiral Canaris killed on 9th of April 1945 and the time OPJB came into action, he had been dead three weeks. Uh, Operation James Bond. If Canaris was not actually working for the British, it is clear that he was working against Hitler. Operation James Bond was designed by M, and Gordon Bowden had a mate called M. All of them are intertwined with all of the deceit. M, that is Gordon Bowden's friend, lives in the West Country uh, where the Breden camps also lived and he makes his money by making patents for the devices that allow people to trade nuclear weapons all around the world. <laughs> it's really really sad. He used to ring me on a Sunday when I was scammed of several jobs because I was engaged in negotiations to try and keep Britain out of brutalizing Syria and all of it is just a sick joke by the same type of participants uh, that are deserters to their nation but are perfectly capable and very very intelligent like all of the participants in these stories except possibly some of them are gay. <laughs> Director of Special Secret Intelligence Operation Major Desmond Morton that's the father, uh, that's the man from Uncle, Uncle Desmond Morton do you remember the joke about the man from Uncle 
with David McCallum and everybody, all the female gender, melting at the knees about stories about American spies in the Man from Uncle series. It's Desmond Morton, wartime double agents. Prime Minister and second in command of M, Winston Churchill, Director and Naval Intelligence, Rear Admiral John Godfrey, another Dad's Army character exposed, Godfrey, and Lieutenant Commander of the Royal Navy Intelligence Division, Ian Fleming, Godfrey's personal assistant, sub, sub uh, at footnote, Bodyguard of Lies, page 816 in this book of Greg Hallett's. Okay, uh, so there are many other snippets of Operation Winnie the Pooh and James Bond on Greg Hallett's various web pages. You should go there and you should identify all of the figures and all of the the uh, the jokes that they make. Operation Winnie the Pooh this time. With the use of doppelgangers, Hitler's entourage were specialists in deception, deceiving each other, themselves, the staff and any witnesses. Any witnesses they failed to control were either killed, ordered to suicide, it, suicided or swore the dreaded holy oath of silence on penalty of death to themselves and their entire family. Such was the depth of their oath, secrecy and in-house revenge. The Germans have Teutonic brains and always planned everything three years ahead and right down to the last detail. On 22nd April 1945, Hitler announced to General Alfred Jodl, advisor on strategy and operations, and General Karl Koller, chief of Luftwaffe staff, among others, that he was intending to suicide. Field Marshal Wilhelm Keitel, chief of armed forces high command, General Alfred Juddell, advisor on strategy and operations, and Albert Speer, Ministry of Armaments, then left the bunker with some impetus and spread the news to the wider world. Once the secret from no greater source got out, everyone was expecting Hitler to suicide, and it was a big relief when he evidently did. Hitler and his entourage had been in the bunker from 16th January 1945, and from 21st April 1945, there were many permanent escapes out of the bunker. These occurred on 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 29th, 30th April, and on 1st May 1945. The Allies knew about them and did little to stop them, except when there was agreement with the Germans to stop them. Operation Winnie the Pooh deals with Adolf Hitler and Eva Braun's escape from the bunker on 30th of April 1945, and their flight out of Berlin between 4 and 5 p.m. on 2nd May 1945. On 30th April 1945 there were ample opportunities for Adolf and Eva Hitler to escape from the bunker as cover for this no less than six Hitler doppelgangers were terminated around the Chancellery bunker. These were later found by the Red Army's mopping up squads. Okay that's the canned meat operation that we've already heard about and everything was done with named look up Greg Hallett and Operation Winnie the Pooh on the internet and you'll find his interviews with Red Ice Radio uh, with Yorn and with Jim Fetzer who's interviewed me three times now uh, and Lost Leaders there's only two sections left in this very small profile of the massive book uh, and I'd love to be able to afford the whole of Greg Hallett's published output, but at this stage I'm unemployed. <laughs> uh, I'm not yet sleeping in a DOS house like Hitler did in his early days, but that may not be far away if my wife has my, her way with me. Uh, lost leaders, if you want to study history, you need to follow the murders. The history of war, for instance, is the study of mass murder. It is mass murder that makes history and culture that makes home. War is the destruction of cultures and homes. The primary target for the destruction of the home is the man with integrity, which is why I'm relentlessly making the videos 
and trying to shame everybody into being responsible and sharing the country's asset with assets with the country's citizens and creating jobs for everyone. We call this man husband and hero. Traditionally he takes care of the animals and protects the region. Without him, culture is as malleable as clay. It shouldn't be so surprising that Hitler was a British agent. Not only was he completely supported by Churchill and Stalin, in brackets they sabotaged attempts to kill him, but the same pattern is repeated over and over again in War Today. Two of the groups that tried to kill Hitler were the Black Orchestra, Schwarzkapelle, German intelligence, and the Red Orchestra, Rotkapelle, communist intelligence. Both the Black and the Red Orchestra were prepared to risk their lives to kill Hitler. As such, both groups should have had support of Churchill and Stalin. Instead, instead both groups were sabotaged by Churchill and Stalin. The Black Orchestra constituted the only anti-Nazi resistance movement in Germany and had the best access to Hitler as they worked within Hitler's ranks. They were in constant contact with Churchill, but Churchill refused to return their calls. Churchill, on the other hand, took the less effective Red Orchestra more seriously and assisted them occasionally. The Red Orchestra were communist intelligence who wanted to kill Hitler on behalf of Stalin but would always be less effective than the Black Orchestra. As part of the Russo-German Non-Aggression Pact, 23rd August 1939, Hitler asked Stalin to surrender the Red Orchestra. These were all highly trained and motivated German, French, Belgian and Dutch spies. In a fit of ambivalence, Stalin ordered the Red Orchestra to Moscow by rail to receive medals. When they passed through Germany, the Gestapo sealed off an entire train station and had them all shot. So perished the best intelligence service the Russians ever had in the West. Just like the Chinook for the Irish Troubles, everything is there to perpetuate the chaos and the killing. Uh, and I think that that is the bottom of it now. Uh, oh no, Churchill, Hitler and Stalin work. When the British soldiers, Chaplin plays the muse. When the British soldiers return from war on the continent and compare notes with British intelligence in Britain, they suddenly felt very sick. The British intelligence chiefs woke up in 1945 and realised they had been hard, that the war was an, arrange an arrangement, a fallacy, a pre-organised hoax, with goals well defined before World War I ever broke out. This led to a personal disillusionment amongst many high-ranking soldiers who then refused to talk about the war. The tight-lipped Big Ear generation, remember Big Ears in the Beaverbrook's Daily Express? The tight-lipped Big Ear generation as indicative of determined survivors, large noticeable ears in brackets, who were bitter about the responsibilities tight-lipped. British agents Adolf Hitler and Dr. Theodore Morel. Hitler's doctor, Dr. Theodore Morel, was a British agent, Freemason, secret Tibetan Lodge member and Vril practitioner. Placed there by King George V and VI, these were all qualities he shared with Adolf Hitler, although Hitler denies the Freemasonry connection. Vril was the life forces taught in Tibet to Gurdjieff, who taught Hitler's dentist, Dr. Friedrich Kron, and Professor Karl Haushofer, both of them Hitler's primary spiritual mentors in the occult. Vril was so popular as a concept in the early 1900s, it led to the brand name, and this is another one of the massive jokes, Bovril, Bovine and Vril. Yeah, Bovril, what we've got in all those ads for all those decades ever since. Karl Haushofer's son Albrecht was the Duke of Hamilton's lover, who was the Duke of Kent's lover, who was King George VI's brother. 
Dr. Moreau was offered a position as Doctor of the Shah of Persia. This is a telltale sign that he was a British agent, as the Shah of Persia was a British hostage, allowed to function, but completely under British rule. Mr. Dr. Morell had been a doctor on board elegant transatlantic liners between Hamburg and Buenos Aires, and was a fashionable dermatologist at the Berlin Tennis Club, making him something of a VIP, although he was recognised and well received by high society, he was a short fat curio. The opinions of his colleagues and historians were that was he was a complete, and that's on the next page. This is only a sample of Greg Hallett's insightful writings in Hitler was a British agent, uh, and I'm citing it all from his websites. Uh, I'll show you some images of some of the themes that we've covered uh, if I've got time and we could that's Pope Pius with the canaries on his shoulder I think it's the computer's too cold to engage in that uh, so let's just look at some of the images on here and remind ourselves of what we've just been talking about that I think will be the training regimes for Stalin and Hitler, Tavistock, Liverpool uh, and it's ever so slow oh, so there's World War One, and there's Hitler and his relatives in the Rothschild dynasty who sire almost all of the key characters in these stories uh, the story about the horse in the pyjamas and the links to the religious fraud ripping the pyjamas off the horse and shagging it by the bull <laughs> uh, and it is ever so we've seen those images before let's have a look at these ones they might have Winnie the Pooh and the Bond stories and all the key characters do you get the jokes about dad's army now uh, we've heard about Godfrey being a double agent here's the uh, Woody window which is also part of the story in the Lord of the Rings film and Hayes End where Tom Bol Bombadil lives on the edge of the wood is actually hell <laughs> in uh, popular culture there I've mentioned H.G. Wells brought into the war office to keep the people in fear uh, I've mentioned that all of these people were double agents in the SOE in Mossad. Uh, Mossad was launched, I think, in 1946. We heard that earlier. But you've got all of the intel efforts uh, involving uh, the British intelligence and global intelligence interlocking in these ruthless, ruthless teams. And when you were in the teams, it must have been terribly insecure that you could be taken out with impunity on a whim by people like him ok uh, there's the pictures again of all the jokes Bree in the Lord of the Rings is right on the place in the Maginot line where the hole was uh, we've got P.G. Woodhouse's pacifist jokes in the lead up to war and in all the Wealth Divide projects ever since and you've got the people in the stories by Woodhouse uh, that are fascists in places like Sidcup in London uh, that's the Maginot Line bit the, the Bree breach in the Maginot Line is right next door to Waterloo which is a great triumph for the funders of all of these campaigns Greg does not talk a lot about the Rothschilds in these series of books but his focus was on the Rothschilds and he revealed the massive monarchy frauds uh, I hope I can find you uh, an image of the uh, 100 acre wood uh, that's you know even shared in places as close to me as Melrose uh, Dresden the massive campaigns that is the artistic city with the beautiful art galleries all the treasures were laundered out all the refugees were laundered in and they were burnt to a crisp 
by the firebombing campaign that Churchill also ordered. Uh, here we go. So Operation Winnie the Pooh. Christopher Robin Goes to War. This is the Mount Batten Report book by Hallett. John Ainsworth Davis is Christopher Robin. This is the follow-up to Operation Winnie the Pooh. Ian Fleming, or another uh, part of the story, Pooh was Ian Fleming. Uh, Winston Churchill was Tigger. Desmond Morton, that's the man from Uncle, was Owl. General Ismay was the Heffalump. Patricia Faulkner was Alice. King George VI was the author, A. A. Milne. <laughs> Admiral Mountbatten was Charlemagne. Admiral Wilhelm Canaris was Eeyore. They had him killed, remember. Ribbentrop was Rue. Hitler was Rabbit. The SS are Rabbit's friends. The Gestapo are Rabbit's relations. Admiral Darlin is Woozle. Comte de Paris, France. Henri d'Orleans is Monsieur Robin. There's the flight in the Sunderland float planes, uh, sorry, in the float planes to out of uh, the Spree region and into Muggle Sea, I think. Uh, and the, the River Spree was connected, I think, by a canal, and the submarine brought them out of the bunker region, and eventually they were flown into Spain. Where Hitler spent the rest of his life, uh, and here you can see him with Prime Minister Quisling. That is a joke, but that is the man's real name because he deserted his country. And there, a picture behind him is of his nickname. Quisling's nickname, Prime Minister Quisling's nickname, was Gimli. One of the other jokes about the Lord of the Rings. Can you see how evil the world is? Everything that we believe is a falsehood. There's a yellow submarine joke that is the New World Order musicians joke. And the Eva Braun in the little blue, dr blue dress stories. There we have a picture of Churchill and Morton together. Uh, and Bilbo in the Lord of the Rings is a Ku Klux Klan senator who kills the blacks. And in recent years we still have fascism all over Europe as exemplified by this man in Norway who shot 50 or 60 students at a left-wing rally. His name was Brevik. Okay, uh, we could go a little bit further and see if there's any more. All of it, the motive is this. Yeah, and all of the participants are from distant continents. This is the flight of the Bush dynasty their name when they were in Europe was the Scherfs uh, and it just rolls on and on and on uh, and here we've got the stories about the crematoriums and the death camps a lot of that was in the Treblinka region which is close I think to the Austrian birthplace of Hudal and of Arne Schwarzenegger that we heard about earlier in the earlier video and then you've got the Perez dynasty that are now or for several decades have been sacrificed in the desert in Israel as the Prime Minister when the rest of his family get to run art galleries in lovely European cities and in Latin America where they have massive estates and there's Mrs Thatcher in London with the Latin American genocide leader Pinochet after he had retired to his safe haven in London. Okay, so that's getting away from the James Bond stuff. It's getting us into the religious fraud that is massive and is concurrent with all of this. So we've got the Holocaust and the death of millions of Jews. It did not matter what your religion was. As long as you were poor and not in the elite team, you were culled. Uh, and I think that oh no we've got more so here's more on grip that's the one that we've been focusing on 
there's just snippets from it I would love to have the whole collection but I cannot afford it and since Greg was disappeared and has been talking only about the things he was talking about since I l before I last heard from him on Skype and in his last interviews on the illegitimacy of the British monarchy I'm still a bit negative about whether or not he's walking this earth uh, I think he's been taken out and I've talked to Fetzer since the rest of the investigative journalists began to celebrate his resurrection from the dead uh, and are you my father this is about the all the breeding scandals how to take over the world Stalin's British training New Zealand a blackmailer's guide and that's the one where he talks about the coercion the political deviancy in almost every leading politician in New Zealand and when I talked to him on the phone he told me that only one of the politicians was decent and that was Rodney Hyde uh, and that they had softened him up with a good looking woman to divert him into the bedroom behaviours and to take the decency out of him and the activist out of him I have no idea whether that's true and what has become of Rodney Hyde but when we were in New Zealand he was a prominent and very vocal person the sex collector stitch ups uh, three issues of that everything is about coercion everything is about making politicians do the wrong thing for their countries and perpetually keeping the world in a really really dangerous spot okay and he can explain the psychology behind every event in war we've heard a little bit about the links to Ireland of the Germans we've heard a little bit about the Pearl Harbor, no we haven't heard the Pearl Harbor story but Pearl Harbor was the way of initiating the involvement of Japan uh, in the breach of the pledge that <laughs> FDR would never go to war like the pledge that Woodrow Wilson make that his kids and American youngsters would not be in the war all of it is overturned by these really really clever but deceitful and deviant people uh, and it's ever so nasty uh, and it, it's impossible to contemplate that it's still going on today so there we have the images of the escape from Berlin uh, and you can see that the yellow submarine was deployed in the canal region Hitler's bunker was there and then you've got the river Oder uh, and you've got a telehawk plane uh, and the further flight towards Spain down the river Spree to Oder uh, and eventually uh, the pickup points for Hitler and Bormann uh, and there's the Muggle Sea region there so that was a intermediate point where the passengers were exchanged and they went off in different directions at that point uh, and all of that is from is sourced on my website but it is also the work of Greg Hallett and when you can see the beautiful images it's tragic that his websites are now being closed down and the amazing videos that he's made with investigative journalists all around the globe are becoming rarer and rarer and more fragmented as people rip them apart I'm determined to make his work, work available and if I can possibly afford it and my wife gives me a living wage after our divorce is over then <laughs> I'm desperately keen to acquire his books before they are burnt and censored uh, ok that's more on the Perizzite diasporas and the modern day dynasties who have funded it and I mentioned Putin's involvement with Hill and Clark in the intel sector in New Zealand and all of that goes on for decades everything is absolutely greedy everything could be funded properly if the banks that they do this for were back in democratic hands uh, and what else have we got
Oh yeah, so this is my website and where you can find this stuff. So go to Prof. George Lee's Revelations, look for Freemasons led blindly by Illuminati despots and fascists globally without any personal awareness and on one of the sub pages you'll find the psychology of mind control and group behaviour uh, and there's the link to Greg Hallett and Operation Winnie the Pooh, Profiteering and Genocide, World War One and Two to the present day Operation Winnie the Pooh. You'll find that also somewhere down this index on the left hand side and this is more uh, dated stuff on group behaviours, how the Freemasons work, how the Catholic Church work, how everybody is drawn into political correctness, the massive scams about trade delegations and trans-Pacific trade delegations and the creation of trade markets like the European Union which is just a theft project to strip the so sovereignty from everyone and then you get the old-fashioned Masonic techniques you get the denunciation of communism <laughs> uh, and everywhere that communism is raised it's culled and the communists are actually multi-millionaires because they're planted and picked by the Rothschilds as well that's the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the big financial institutions that own the federal banks all around the globe and it is a scandal about the ownership of the British Federal Bank because it's run by a Canadian and our biggest union leader is on the board of that organisation he will not give his members even a 1% pay rise the whole world is a theft project uh, I'm not sure what this one is could be the New World Order bans uh, we've got false religions everywhere but this article does not mention that we've got a rabbit or it could be a pig they are iconic in the PG Woodhouse stories about the Empress of Blandings and the fascism being prevalent all across elite England uh, and Scotland for that matter where the Hamiltons came from and Hess and his double went to uh, in that operation that we've heard about or Hess's double went there flew to Hamilton was sent to Winston Churchill in Oxfordshire and Winston Churchill had him jailed for life that was only the doppelganger <laughs> okay and we've got sexual coercion terror in the Freemasonic Lodge in the darkened room after you've been laying naked in a coffin in front of the other members and everybody gets to know the size of your willy and everybody gets compromised because they're foolish enough to enter into what their dad thought was a good way of keeping their friends and led to believe it's £250 a year to stay a member and you can see the consequences for the brutalised world and the victims of it are the children of the people that blindly adhere the Duke of Kent was the head of Freemasons for several decades and now that that has been revealed he spends very little time in the limelight he used to present the trophies at Wimbledon uh, now you see just a mug shot of him and he's gone <laughs> like uh, Virgil Kent in the, the uh, usual sp suspects movies everything is deceitful dishonest and genocidal and it is just a series of bad habits and only decent people like you and me can change it only by exposing that it actually happens and when you listen to the news every morning they're engaged in another warmongering campaign even in the churches I've told you about the issues they are listening to me in the local churches but I have no way of controlling the pan-continental issues that they are determined to create World War Three by using uh, what else have we got oh that's us back to it so I'm going to stop there and that I believe is the story of how wars are run and how wars are created by false news by release of fictitious enemies by le funding beyond the realms of belief those insurrectionists 
those false news movie events that we've talked about and all of it leads to perpetual fear for the nations that are not in the western countries and all of it is led by world leaders prime ministers and banking leaders <laughs> that have been picked and some of those things I just learned this evening about the what was the elite university in America where only banking leaders were allowed to attend uh, it is just amazing uh, and all of it is done so that they can control the issuance of money and all of the wars are designed to bankrupt every country which they've now done and to impose on them massive loans and reparations uh, and huge rates of interest and we now no longer can afford in my region to have a funded garden rubbish collection and there are signs from corporations from 20 miles down the road that if you dump your garden waste in the middle of a dense wood on a walkway near my home that you will be fined £40,000 for it uh, and that is a corporate activity uh, and <laughs> there's the type of corporations that run the world for 150 years or so since Tiny Rowlands went to South Africa South Africa and launched the Lonru Cabal Prince Charles's financial director as we disclosed the other day Christopher Chambers is the CEO and chairman at Lonru they're involved in the companies in Switzerland that were involved with all these guys and Führhop is Roland and Ratzinger is the Nazi Pope the real Nazi Pope was Pius XII with the canaries on his shoulder and Hudol and Arne Schwarzenegger are from almost exactly the same region of Austria they're very close to the death camps at, I think it's Treblinka in Austria and they are close to the birthplace of Hitler which is also a religious joke the Branau um, in no room at the inn joke and all of the jokes about the beaver brook yeah the beaver dams as the war correspondent and propagandist for the allied countries the uh, Nazi power base yeah beaver brook that's what a beaver does in the Innsbruck region to a Hitler who was trained like all of these people he's got dozens of body doubles as well but he or one of them is fit <laughs> uh, and is portrayed on screen and when I've seen him talking to the press it's measured uh, and relatively schol scholarly and the press respect him uh, and he has since the uh, Winter Olympics in Sochi where everything was peaceful despite their bad propaganda he has been demonized as the culprit in the brutalization of Ukraine uh, and the culprits in there are the usual suspects in Britain and in the G8 cabal who know that Ukraine is the home of the Rothschilds and the Rothschilds <laughs> are uh, still the world's owners they own all of the financial institutions on the globe now uh, and all that democracy needs to do is to declare that the game is up you cannot have a global balance sheet where every country is in debt there are no creditors they've got all the cash in the havens and it is pathetic and it will lead unless we rise up and declare that we understand how it works and prevent our children walking to the edge of the town and being drafted by bastards like them and them that's Ted Heath all the Prime Ministers all the Fat Cats all the Henry Kissingers 
none of the monarchs die in conflict we had the one who fell off his horse and had to be taken home early all of the war bond profiteers in America the Bing Crosby led stuff that follows up with vicious jokes right through the 1950s and 60s and the creation of the Oscar winning false movie empire that has given Oscars to Steve McQueen the black man who's the cover for the man who died young in the great escape jokes uh, and the man who played the man from Uncle Hero who's a Scotsman uh, I forget his name the blonde guy in the man from Uncle who was killed on the railway tracks in the great escape movie plays the villain or the hero in some of the Treasure Islands movies in the past and all of it is just a vicious joke against the world's ordinary and decent people they're also ordinary and decent worshippers all of them think that they are saving their souls but what they're doing is chucking their money into the stream that goes into the pockets of these villains yeah uh, or the current Pope or the current Cardinal base I don't see any evidence that the parish churches get any benefit from their massive fundraising operations every Sunday it all seems to be laundered in a head office and off to distant continents <laughs> uh, I, everybody is hell bent on expanding their empires of influence and peer pressure it is pathetic uh, and Greg Hallett has a broad understanding of it and if you're finished with these books please please send them to me <laughs> uh, and do it quickly because I'm going to lose my home because I'm trying to save society and to make it prosperous again bye bye